everyone, my name is Naisha and you're watching Brown and Abroad. Today's video is going to be about all things pet sitting. If you're an OG channel watcher, then you probably know that I've been pet sitting for almost four years now. I guess you can say that I specialize in in your home pet sitting, which basically means I stay in a person's home for a determined amount of time living with the pet and in exchange for accommodation. And that is basically one of the main ways that I have been able to kind of trip all over the world. So if you have ever been interested or curious about how I travel around the world or pet sitting in general and how you can get started, this is the video for you. But first, give me a thumbs up if you're interested in this video and let's get started. Picture it. Shanghai 2018 I was having the darnest time keeping a job after uh, city weekend shut down and the visas and everything were changing and out your girl was just out here just you know not really doing the thing career wise so it was at the very beginning of my freelance career where I decided that I was going to go freelance and I had given up my apartment because my lease was almost over and I was like, I don't know if I can really like even really like a fourth is written anymore. I might have to downsize and get like a room or whatever. So I was going through a breakup at the time with this person and they had suggested that I pet sit for a friend of theirs who was going on vacation for about six weeks. And it turned out to be like a really great blessing because I was able to stay in that person's house for about six weeks. And then I went someplace else for about a month to another six weeks. And then I ended up going back to her house for like another like three or four weeks. During that time, I had also started a pet sitting business where I was doing drop-in appointments during the holiday season that year. So that also was a very lucrative time for me. And it was just, it was really life changing to be quite honest. And since I started pet sitting back in 2018, I've pet sat in Shanghai, Thailand, Mexico, and most recently the US of A. Different things work for different locales. When I was in Shanghai, I started off very easy word of mouth and then I found some clients in WeChat groups. If you don't know what WeChat is, it's a messaging, you know, app that is kind of similar but way better than WhatsApp. And I went into mommy groups and parenting groups, animal rights groups, vegan groups, and I was able to kind of I put together a flyer uh, offering my services and then I ended up getting a lot of clients that way. I found clients in a very similar manner when I moved to Thailand and Mexico but it was more Facebook groups that were dedicated to house sitting and pet sitting is where I found the bulk of my clients in Thailand and in Mexico and again a little bit through word of mouth as well. Now when it comes to the US, things were a little bit different. I ended up having to sign up for a website called Trusted House Sitters because I just wasn't finding the same plethora of groups, I guess, and community in the same way that I found, you know, in overseas. And knowing what I know about the US, it just kind of seemed like Finding gigs was going to be a lot more easier if I was going to take like kind of like the agency route almost. That seems to be kind of like what Americans like. They want something that's kind of going to be, that's going to take all the guesswork out and all the heavy lifting out. out. And that's what a site like Trusted House Sitters does. I signed up for a one year membership. Uh, I paid a fee and it took maybe a few days, if that, for me to get, you know, approved for the site. They did a background check. So I'm basically, like, verified that, you know, I'm not, you know, I don't know, that I'm on the up and up and stuff like that. 
from there, I was able to upload references, external references, because I didn't have any on the site yet. So I sent a link to a few people that I had passed it before, and they did an external ref review for me. And since then, I have added a few more reviews from people on the site. And let me tell you, I was a little apprehensive because of the price. It was like $100. But it is for the year and it has really paid for itself. Like the first, probably like the first pet sit I got paid for it because the places that I've been living in, I would never have been able to afford to live in them on my own with just at all in San Francisco, in New York in particular. My first pet sit on the site was for a little bit over a month and then I had a few smaller ones that were like 10 days, 8 days, 2 weeks, things like that. I do prefer, you know, the longer the merrier for me as long as I don't have like obligations in another city or whatever. But I will take a, a shorter sit depending on, you know, if I have to, you know, fill in the gap somewhere. But if I'm going to be flying to a location, I try to make sure that the sit is at least three weeks. I also want to tell you a little bit about the behind the scenes of being a pet sitter. About some of the things that I've done to make myself a little bit more attractive to potential clients. I usually have a background check, a federal level background check that you can order on your own. And it's good, it's valid for I believe six months. Every six months you can get a new one. You can get like a physical copy and then the e-copy. And you can just have that. That's one thing that I show uh, new potential people if they ask. Or sometimes not even if they ask, but I will, I'll just have it as something like, you know, a little point of reference. Nothing is better than having good references and keeping a good reputation. So I try to do that. I try to, you know, I haven't been, I'm not perfect, but I definitely think that my track record speaks for itself. And I probably have, I have way more satisfied people than not satisfied and that's how I aim for it to be because you just never know out here like it's a word of mouth type of thing and you don't really want people to like you know be talking about you crazy behind your back and I also got pet CPR certified I hope to never have to like put that stuff in action but it was a really great seminar and a really great thing for me to know for primarily cats and dogs. Uh, just, just something extra.